life. <clears throat> but we're going to blow you full of holes. But he knows it's dangerous for long-term exposure to x-rays. So that's why he's got the lead apron and runs out behind the lead wall. He don't want to get exposed to those x-rays. But a lot of people don't realize the sun x-rays us every day. We're being x-rayed right now. Now, concrete will stop x-rays and water will stop x-rays, but this roof on this church will not stop x-rays. They're coming right through the roof and right through your body. And you're being x-rayed as you sit there. Not a thing you can do about it. Well, I'll tell you in a minute what you can do about it. But your skin feels the full force of these x-rays. And your body has to fix the damage. I mean, you fix millions of holes in your skin every single day. Millions of them. And after 50 or 60 years, or 70 or 80 for sure, everybody around you starts to notice you are losing the battle for damage control. Your skin begins to wrinkle up. You say, Brother Hovind, I, I, I don't want to get old and wrinkled. Okay. If you don't want to get wrinkled, there are three things you can do about it. Number one, you can die early. <laughs> Number two, you can carry a lead or a concrete umbrella over your head at all times. Do not ever get exposed to the x-rays. Or number three, you can do what Elizabeth Taylor has done. How many have ever heard of Elizabeth Taylor, the movie star? Somebody told me years ago, she's got a hole in her forehead. Every morning, she fills it in with caulk and covers it up with makeup, and it's really tough to see, but, you know, it's top secret, actually. But I was at Walmart one time, you know, checking out, trying to, you know, check out at Walmart, and there's all these magazines right there beside me, and one of them had Elizabeth Taylor's picture on the front. She was getting married for the 40th time or something, you know, and I thought, hey, I'm going to check this out. I heard about this hole in her forehead, but, you know, I wanted to see it for myself. So I got my Swiss Army knife out, which has a magnifying glass on it, and I picked up the magazine, and I began staring at her forehead. People are walking down the aisle looking at me. I said, hey, what's the matter with you? I'm just looking at a magazine, huh? Go shop, right? I looked at it for a while, and I finally figured out what the hole was. I was so proud of myself. That lady has had so many facelifts down through the years trying to get rid of the wrinkles. It's her belly button right there. <laughs> hey, go to Walmart. She's probably getting married again this week. You can see her picture on there. You say, well, Brother Hovind, I don't want to get old and wrinkled. I'm sorry. If you get old, you're going to get wrinkled, okay? You might as well get ready for it. But that didn't happen before the flood. The Bible says before the flood came, they lived to be over 900 years old and probably didn't wrinkle. One guy is going around, he claims he's a creationist. He says, now, folks, uh, they didn't really live to be 900. They counted every month as a year. They used a lunar calendar, and you have to divide those numbers by 12. Wow. That's an even bigger miracle. Enoch was 65 when he begat Methuselah. Two of these guys are 65. Let's see, divided by 12. That makes him five and a half when he became a daddy. <laughs> I doubt that real seriously. Okay, I'd have a hard time believing that. No, they really were living to be 900, and they got bigger. Here's me by Robert Wadlow, tallest man in this century, 8 foot 11 and a quarter. Had a size 37 shoe. Pretty big boy, okay? Robert Wadlow would have been just a few inches shorter than Goliath, who was about 9 foot 5 or 6. Robert Wadlow, at age 12, was the world's tallest Boy Scout. Here he is, age 12, with his Boy Scout troop. We would consider that gigantic at almost 9 feet tall, wouldn't we? But I think uh, before the flood, they got even bigger than that. Here's a skeleton of a man 11 foot 6 inches tall. Well, long, not tall. He's laying down now. 11 foot 6. How would you like to have one of those guys on your basketball team? Well, UT would be the champs from now on, wouldn't they? 11 foot 6. Now, sometimes the women get upset with me and they say, Hovind, you said that was a skeleton of a man. Maybe it was a woman. Well, I taught biology and anatomy, okay? I happen to know how to tell the difference between a male and female skeleton. It is not the number of ribs. Only Adam was missing a rib, and only for a short time. Because there's only one bone in the human body that will grow back if you take it out. Your lower rib will grow back if you remove it. You know, lizard's tail grows back if you cut it off. The lower rib will grow back if you take it out. Boy, you'd almost think God knew what he was doing if you didn't know better. But anyway, there are two ways to tell the difference between a male and female skeleton. One way is to look at the feet. If they're pointed toward the mall, it's a woman. <laughs> the other way is to look at the process on the temporal mandibular joint. If that joint right there is worn out more, <clears throat> it's a woman. 
One lady said, that's because we have to tell you men everything twice. You don't listen first time. <laughs> guilty, guilty. Tallest man today, it was eight foot four when this picture was taken. I've been told he's now eight foot seven living in Ukraine. Pretty good sized boy. Eight foot seven. Big hands. There he is trying to use a cell phone. <laughs> That'd be tough, wouldn't it? <laughs> Roman Emperor Maximus was eight foot six 2,000 years ago. Where we get our word maximum from? A nine foot eight inch skeleton was found in Indiana. Two skeletons, nine feet tall, found in Virginia City. Every skeleton found in this mine, in, uh, I mean, in this burial mound in Louisiana, 20 skeletons were found, all of them nine feet tall. Skeleton 10 feet tall, found in Humboldt Lake, Nevada. And in Guam, they have a legend that the giants used to live on the island of Guam and built these big latte stones over there. In Indiana, eight giants were found, ranging from eight to nine feet long, wearing heavy copper armor. The museum was not interested in them. Why would a museum not be interested in nine-foot skeletons to put on display? Could it be that there's a theory called evolution which says we started off small and we're getting bigger? Which makes us feel important, of course, you know. We're evolving. Ye shall be as gods. You're getting better. Could it be the truth is exactly the opposite? People were much bigger before the flood and now we're getting worse? And maybe they're trying to hide that? A 12-foot skeleton found in Lompoc Rancho, California. Another 12-footer found in Tucson, Arizona. The guy had six toes. Six fingers, six toes, and a bird-shaped headdress. When the Mexicans, Cortez, went to uh, Mexico and conquered part of it, the people who lived there said, oh, there used to be giants that lived on this continent. They brought a bone of one of these guys out. Just the thigh bone was as tall as Cortez. Just the thigh bone. And he said, I'm a man of good size. He said, I'm a good sized guy. And this was the same size as me. This is a giant block of rock. Who on earth is moving these things? Consider that's a camel in front of it for scale. Who's cutting and moving these things? This is a 39 pound axe head. Swing a 10 pound sledge for a few minutes and see why I'm wondering who's swinging a 39 pound axe head. This is a stone designed to be held between the thumb and finger for chipping. The Smithsonian is responsible for hiding most of the discoveries of giant humans. They don't want people to know about these giants because it goes against the evolution theory. This skull used to be on display in Winnemucca, Nevada until a few years ago when they took it down. It's in the basement. You have to specially ask to see it. A giant human skull. Here's a normal human thumb bone. Underneath is a giant human thumb bone. This is part of a skeleton found at a grave in Turkey right near Mount Ararat. The government of Turkey says they have found the grave of Noah. The skeleton was 12 feet tall. Now that would make his cubit a little bigger.